So today I want to talk about Nayuta and specifically where I think Chainsaw Man Part 2 is going with her because I think with a story like Chainsaw Man that you know just constantly changes with every chapter it's really unpredictable how it'll finally end because I think Part 1 was a solid way to close out the series had Nayuta never been introduced and this isn't me saying that I'm against her as a new character or even the idea of a sequel. If anything it just speaks to how good of a finale we got to where Chainsaw Man ending the way that it did would have been entirely fine with me I think but of course since the control devil is back in part 2 has been announced, it really begs the question, how is this supposed to go on? So ultimately, I think there's a few plausible outcomes we can sit on here and discuss, so yeah, let's just get into it. So as for who exactly Nayuta is, which I'm sure a lot of you who are big fans of the series will already know, but for those that don't, it's very apparent that she's being based off a character from another manga written by Fujimoto, the same author of Chainsaw Man, and this was called Yogen no Nayuta or Nayuta of the Prophecy. And this was made back in 2015, a few years before Chainsaw Man started publishing publishing, and with only one chapter released for it since this was a one-shot, there are just so many things from here that ended up being cross-referenced into Chainsaw Man, you know, many years later. So just to give you a quick rundown of what this short piece is about, it's about a girl named Naita who was apparently spoken of in some prophecy talking about her not being understood by others, uh, not having a human heart, and above all, one day destroying the world. So the character design and name are the most obvious that they have in common with uh, the Naita we see that ended up in Chainsaw Man, but in the actual context of it, the Naita here and Yogi no Naita also seems to have a similar interest in dogs and rats that of course we know now ended up also being seen in Makima. And in this story it seems like her big brother Kenji, which whose name sounds a lot like Denji, is her main guardian, pretty much protecting her from everyone who wants her dead before she destroys the world like the prophecy had predicted. So already a lot of things in common and considering this was a one shot published before Chainsaw Man officially began, it really makes you wonder what was the initial story of this and why did Fujimoto ultimately decide to reference back to it for Chainsaw Man Part 2. And the reason I mention all of this is because I think this is where Part 2 will go with her, building her from the beginning with Denji into the story's main and final villain of the series. Because if we look at both Nayutas, they both appear very empty, like there isn't a personality to them which makes sense, you have one who's destined to destroy the world and the other being the control devil, but it's hard to find anything really redeeming at a first glance, which I wouldn't consider a good sign in a manga like Chainsaw Man where everyone is so expressive. I can't think of any character who intentionally held back other than Makima so as a first impression, I think she feels more like a vessel here for the control devil that can either go entirely one way or the other. And I think that's the centerpiece to all of this, Naita being in the control devil, because if you're suggesting there is a common denominator between Naita from Chainsaw Man and Naita from Yogi no Naita, I think it goes a lot further than just their character designs or the fact they have the same name. Like I mentioned earlier, in the one shot there are actually three things in particular that the prophecy had said about her, the three being that she doesn't have a human heart, she can speak but isn't understood by others, and she will destroy the world. So immediately, I think the Naita from Chainsaw Man hits one out of the three here, where it talks about being destined to destroy the world, because I think you can blame this more on the control devil than her specifically. I mean, this explains why the control devil is able to reincarnate even after Denji eats Makima, because it needs to be the chainsaw devil who eats the devil for it to, you know, be fully dead and gone, right? But since this doesn't happen and the control devil is able to reincarnate anyway, it's pretty much like Kashibe says, if Naita would stay in the hands of the government, chances are she would end up like Makima did. But but again, I think the centerpiece here is the control devil, not the way the government worked to influence Makima because it's eventually revealed that what Makima really wanted was a true family. So there was a, a sense of humanity when it came to Makima and when it came to the world. And I do mean some, at least, you know, enough to be worth mentioning here. But since we know she was the control devil, her methods were just outright unjustified. So I think in part two, especially because it feels like Nayuta is more of a vessel to the control devil at this point than a real character, we're going to be seeing the control devil in more or death, maybe even Denji trying to balance it out so that Naita can live with it and maintain a normal life. And who knows, maybe we will be seeing the whole Yogi no Naita plot just happen here in part 2. Maybe there is a sort of prophecy for who the control devil is or whatever that makes it want to dominate and control the world, right? Because another thing that the prophecy stated was that Naita doesn't have a human heart and I can see Denji being able to mirror towards that since I guess, you know, metaphorically speaking, it wasn't until the end of part 1 that we really see Denji in a new light, almost more dignified after learning about things, you know, more important than just his own survival or touching some boobs. So overall, it's hard to say how literal this will be taken into part two if, again, it even follows this prophecy and applies towards her, but the theme of the human heart I think will definitely come back, just going off the way part one was all about the chainsaw man devil's heart, right? So I'm not sure how this will be related, but it's interesting since, again, the heart was very emotionally and physically relevant throughout all of chainsaw man part one, so whether we see Naito's heart play into this as a personality piece or an actual physical trait to her being the control devil, 
level, I think could reflect on what we learned about in the prophecy since it does feel like Naita being the end-all be-all villain has a likely chance of happening. And like I already mentioned, you have to wonder what kind of story Fujimoto had originally planned for her in that time before Chainsaw Man even started if, you know, he even considered her as a main character for, you know, that separate one-shot. So I think you guys get the gist on where I could see Naita as a character going into part two, but I just want to make it clear, I think her role as the main villain will be heavily reliant on where the control devil mystery decides to go because even though Makima is technically dead, the power that made her so dangerous is still active, so it's very likely that we'll be seeing countries like Russia and China and the US come back into the mix again since yeah, she's just as potentially dangerous if not more. So I think this by default means more assassins and more devils, which ironically resembles the sort of witch hunt from Fujimoto's previous manga where everyone wants this Nayuta character dead before she has a chance to destroy the world. So there's definitely a resemblance, but of course, just like how the older brother Kenji was committed to protecting her, I think it means we'll be seeing Denji filling in that role here too of a protective older brother. And since it does feel like power has to come back, I can see Naita and her fighting a lot if and when the time eventually comes that, you know, Denji is ever going to be able to find her again since he formed that contract with her saying you would. So if we ever do see Power Maker return in full, I can see the tension and struggle between Denji who wants to protect both of them while Power will probably insist on killing Naita outright. Alright guys, so I'm gonna end the video here. Thank you so much for watching. I feel with a video like this, the predictions and theories can literally go in every direction. So let me know with what you agreed or disagreed with in the comments, especially if you have some theories of your own. Please leave a like if you enjoyed the video. And if you're interested in more Chainsaw Man content, then uh, please subscribe if you're down. That'd be awesome. I'll be doing more here on the channel. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching, guys. Have a great day.